The cartoon series Star Wars Resistance tries to tell us how we got here with respect to the state of the galaxy before Disney's trilogy, which began with The Force Awakens. It's a children's cartoon and certainly not as action-packed as The Clone Wars. The first season attempts to fill in some of the gaps left by The Force Awakens and give its audience a better understanding of the origins of the New Republic, the First Order, and the Resistance. Does it do a good job? Stay tuned and I'll let you know. The cartoon follows the adventures of Kazuta Siona, young Hosnian pilot sympathetic to the Resistance cause, who happens to run into Poe Dameron in one of his missions. Poe is impressed with Kaz's skills and recruits him to become a spy for the Resistance. One problem is that Kaz's father is a senator of the New Republic, which currently has its capital in Hosnia Prime. Kaz, deciding to be his own man, accepts the mission of trying to blend in on the Colossus, a starship depot in the middle of a seamless, endless ocean on the planet of Castellon. The Colossus is a convenient place for pilots after long journeys to fuel up, have their starships repaired, enjoy a stop at Ansi's Bar, and watch the platform races. The operator of the Colossus, Captain Dozer, has organized these races in order to keep the residents entertained. The Resistance, we learn, believes that the First Order is interested in the Colossus, and Poe wants Kaz to keep his eyes and ears open to learn what he can and to report it back to General Organa. Star Wars Resistant is an unabashedly children's cartoon, but where the Clone Wars fails in this regard, Resistance succeeds. It doesn't have the graphic violence that the Clone Wars has. Now, don't get me wrong, there is an occasional blaster fight. However, the violence is depicted in a more cartoony fashion like you would see on, say, Tom and Jerry. The female characters aren't overly sexualized. They are dressed appropriately and have independent personalities that help drive the plot. And unlike the Clone Wars, which mixed isolated, simplistic episodes in an attempt to draw the younger audience from time to time, along with complex and mature episodes to please the hardcore Star Wars fans, Resistance goes all in in attempting to appeal to children. My estimate is that children between the ages of, say, 8 to 13 are probably the cartoon's target audience. Resistance portrays simple characters who are easy to follow but are not two-dimensional as many of the characters possess some depth. Kaz, for example, develops from an overly eager and idealistic recruit to a wiser, more cautious, and better skilled agent who provides valuable services to the Resistance. The cartoon does employ a few over-the-top characters to provide appropriate comic relief. Niku, for example, is an overly friendly green alien who works for Jarek Yeager, who is a mechanic who runs a repair shop on the Colossus. Niku takes everything people say literally. He has a complete inability to appreciate metaphors and figures of speech. But unlike Jar Jar Binks, Niku is not imbecilic and annoying. His misunderstandings may draw groans like bad, bad jokes, but Niku turns out to be a valuable friend. He is intelligent and sympathetic. His sympathy for others and outgoing nature leads him to know many of the forgotten laborers of the Colossus and understand the ins and outs of the depot probably better than anyone else on the structure. Niku turns out to be a valuable asset to Kaz in his mission of espionage. As a further ploy to keep the attention of young audiences, Resistance uses a number of running gags. There is continued hilarity that stems from Niku's failure to recognize Cass's sarcasm when he first introduces himself as the best pilot in the galaxy. There's a peepit, the janitor, who keeps having his work interrupted by Kaz and the rest of the cast as they are running around the Colossus, paying attention primarily on their own interests. There's the elderly female alien in the background who seems to have impeccable timing and takes advantage of the chaos that ensues from time to time. And then there's Aunt Z and her sarcastic nature. 
Even with simple characters and plots that appeal to children, Resistance does much to fill in the blanks concerning questions that were left open by The Force Awakens. These are questions such as, what is the nature of the New Republic? Where did the First Order come from? And where does the Resistance fit into all of this? We see the First Order as an organized entity that takes advantage of the inability of the Republic to provide order to the outer reaches of the galaxy. It worms its way onto the Colossus by manipulating the need of Captain Dozer to provide security from space pirates who attempt to raid the platform from time to time. But we also see the First Order's hidden agenda. For example, why the First Order was able to develop a weapon like Starkiller Base in secret. Namely, by operating in the shadows, the First Order was able, through experimentation involving a settlement that was far beyond the charts of most people's radars, to develop the technology to drain energy from a star system's sun into a weapon built into the core of a planet. Resistance also shows us how the common folk were vulnerable to accepting the First Order, which had its roots in the old empire, by demonstrating that some people in the galaxy benefited from the order that the empire provided. We get to follow the development of Tam Rivora, another one of Yeager's mechanics who is suspicious when Yeager hires Kaz. Tam informs us that her grandfather benefited from working in one of the Empire's factories, and that she appreciates the security that the First Order brings to the Colossus. Much like even today, you can find young people in Russia who will praise Stalin's leadership because in the past, their families benefited from the order that he brought. Never mind that he had to kill millions of people in order to enforce that order. Tam's suspicion only grows in the first season as she sees the unusual things that Yeager lets Kaz get away with. Her demands to know why Kaz gets Yeager's repeated benefits of the doubt gets met with constant dismissals. When Agent Tierney takes Tam under her wing and reveals that Yeager has been hiding the fact that he's been harboring a resistant spy all this time, Tam is hurt and is all the more willing to join the First Order in a more official capacity. And finally, we see how inhabitants outside of the movies view the resistance and its struggle with the First Order. The season starts a little bit before the time that The Force Awakens is set, but it eventually catches up. We see the reaction not only of the stormtroopers to the destruction of the New Republic on Hosnia Prime, but also that of Kaz, who has lost all that he has ever known, including his friends and family. Resistance is by no means perfect. Implausibilities exist in the plot. For example, Yeager hires Kaz as a mechanic for his cover as a resistance spy. However, Kaz, a pilot, has no experience fixing starship engines. Nonetheless, Yeager throws Kaz straight into the fire, giving him responsibilities to fix starships without providing training. It's a tactic that Tam notices and prods her to ask questions while feeling left out. The first few episodes of season one are heavy on exposition. It takes a while for the action and the intrigue to build up. The computer animation style leaves much to be desired. It's high contrast with lots of bright colors juxtaposed with dark shades for the shadows. It's a style that I first encountered when MTV aired Spider-Man The New Animated Series back in 2003. It's called a cell shaded look. That style was hard on the eyes back in 2003. The style has improved in 17 years, but is still somewhat hard on the eyes. All things considered, the first season of Star Wars Resistance was fairly well done. I do recall growing weary of the first three episodes, but I gave the series a chance and wasn't disappointed. It is technically part of the official Star Wars canon, so die-hard Star Wars fans should give the series a try. If you stick with it, I don't think you'll be disappointed. My name is Bill Kovach. I'm the creator and primary contributor to the Dantuin Free Press. So I'm fighting cancer and I'm also disabled. If you feel generous enough to make a small one-time donation, you can do so through PayPal. I'll have instructions in the description below. A non-tax deductible donation will go to a special needs trust set up for my benefit that will help pay my expenses. Thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing to our channel and give us a like. 
let us know in the comments below what topics you would like to see in the future. And hit that bell button if you would like to receive notification of whenever we release a new video.